Okay, this is the grade 11, November 2018, question on acids and bases. It says ammonia can readily dissolve in water according to the equation below. Ammonia plus water goes to the ammonium ion plus the hydroxide ion. Then it says to you, explain why a hydroxide ion is regarded as a lowery Bronsted base. So give the definition in your answer. A lowery Bronsted base. What is it? Is a proton acceptor. Okay, a proton acceptor. Remember, there's the Arrhenius theory and the Lowry Bronsted theory. Lowry Bronsted says a base is a proton acceptor. So the hydroxide ion can accept an H plus to form water. So an OH minus can accept an H plus. And the 2,4 water is not vital, but you just want to say it is a proton acceptor. Then it says, identify the type of bond responsible for the formation of the ammonium ion in the above equation. Look, NH3 went to NH4 plus through the addition of a proton. This is a dative covalent bond, also sometimes called a coordinate covalent bond. Okay, remember it is the bond where the ammonia, if you draw the Lewis dot diagram, the ammonia has got a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen and the hydrogen, the protons got an empty shell and then their shells overlap and they form a covalent bond, but both electrons are coming from the one nitrogen atom. They are not um, being shared equally between the two, the hydrogen and the nitrogen. Now it says write a balanced equation to show how the amphilite in the above equation will act as a base when it reacts with hydrochloric acid. When you see this word amphilite, a lot of the time you can just assume it is going to be water because water can act as an amphilite and it's the most common amphilite that they ask you about. The other amphilites are usually uh, things in the dissociation or the ionization of acids, polyprotic acids. So here we want to write a balanced equation. One of my reactants is going to be hydrochloric acid and then we are going to add water which is a liquid and it is going to form my hydronium ion in aqueous solution plus the chloride ion in aqueous solution. And this is very easy to balance, okay, because um, it's just one, 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 one. And so this is showing you water here, that here's my water, and it accepted a proton to become the hydronium ion. So there it is, acting as a base. Then we want to go to the second part of the question with the calculation. It says, five cubic decimeters, this is a volume of nitric acid of concentration 0 0.75 moles per cubic decimeter, is spilled accidentally in a small pond of water. The acid and the water, this is obviously the water from the acid and the water in the pond, has a total volume of 1,000 cubic decimeters. To neutralize the acid, calcium hydroxide is added to the water. So he has the reaction, two nitric acid plus one calcium hydroxide goes to calcium nitrate plus water. It's a nice neutralization reaction. Then it says, define the term concentration. Concentration is the amount of solute per liter of solution, or concentration is the number of moles of a substance per cubic decimeter of solution. So remember that formula, C equals N over V, can help you write this definition could is the number of moles per unit volume. Remember when we say per, we are dividing. Okay, so it says calculate the concentration of the acid after it was spilled into the pond. So this is a dilution question. So C1V1 equals C2V2. The concentration times the volume initially is equal to the concentration times the volume, finally. This is because the number of moles is constant, okay? So if you want to do this calculation without 
remembering the dilution formula, you can find the number of moles of nitric acid in the initial volume, then you know the second volume, the number of moles don't change and you can find it, but this formula is much easier. So I've got 5 times comma 75, those are my two initial values. We are looking for the final concentration and the final volume is 1000. All my units are the same in this equation, moles per cubic decimeter and um, uh, volume in cubic decimeters. So my second volume is going to be 5 times comma 75 divided by 1000. So we end up with, why did I write V2 here? Sorry, people, this is not a volume, this is a concentration. My second concentration is going to be 3 comma 75 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per cubic decimeter. Okay. So this is the new concentration of the acid in the pond. Now it says, use calculations to determine if 120 grams of calcium hydroxide will be sufficient to react with completely with all the acid in the pool. This is a limiting reagent calculation. Okay, so remember in a limiting reagent calculation, we have to find the moles first. We have to find the moles of both things usually, or we have to um, find some way to make the two things equivalent using the balanced equation. So if we have a look in the question, the first thing that we know is how much nitric acid we spilt. So let's find the number of moles of nitric acid. And now it doesn't matter. You can use either um, uh, the initial concentration or the final concentration for this calculation. Because remember, the number of moles is not going to change. So using the formula C equals N over V and rearranging it, the number of moles of nitric acid are going to be the concentration times the volume. So if we do this, we get 3,75 moles of nitric acid. Okay. Now we now then, step one is always find the moles. Step two is using the mole ratio. So we go to our balanced equation and we look for the coefficients from our balanced equation. What do we have? What will we need? This is the sort of thing that we are looking for. We have two moles of nitric acid per one mole of calcium hydroxide. So if we have 3,75 moles of nitric acid, look, it's in a ratio of 2 to 1. This is going to be 3,75 divided by 2, which is going to give you 1, 875 moles. Okay, so we can or we need we need 1,875 moles of calcium hydroxide to neutralize the acid we added. So now there's two options that you can do here. Okay, you can either go and say, I have over here 120 grams of calcium hydroxide. Can you see it over here? You can either turn this 120 grams of calcium hydroxide into moles and compare it with this many moles, or you can say, how much does 1,875 moles of calcium hydroxide weigh? Is it more or less than this 120 grams? Whichever way you do it, we need the molar mass of the calcium hydroxide. So the molar mass of calcium hydroxide is going to be 40 for the calcium. Plus, can you see there are two OHs? So we're going to go 2 times 16 for the oxygen plus 1 for the hydrogen. So this works out to 74 grams per mole. So either what you have to do is you have to say, okay, we need 1,875 moles of calcium hydroxide. How much will they weigh? So the mass of calcium hydroxide 
is going to be the number of moles times big M. I've taken this formula, N equals little m over big M, and I've rearranged it to say little m equals N times big M. So here are my moles that I calculated I would need, 1,875 times 74. And if I work this out, I get 138,75 grams. Now, how much did they add? 120. So 120 is less than 138,75. So what does it say? Will it be sufficient? So no, the calcium hydroxide is not sufficient. Okay, so that is the one way of doing it, using the mass. The second way is we got to this statement. We need 1,875 moles of calcium hydroxide to neutralize the acid. So you can then go, and using this N equals M over M, you can say, how many moles of calcium hydroxide did I add? Okay, and this is going to be the mass I added, 120, over the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, which was 74. And this one will give you 1,621 moles. Okay, so this is the moles of calcium hydroxide. We need 1,875. We have 1,62 moles. So you can say 1,875 is bigger than 1,621. So no, calcium hydroxide is not sufficient. So you can see we've used the same formulas. The one is doing a mass-mass comparison. This is a mass-mass comparison. And this one is a mole-mole comparison. How many moles do I have? How many moles do I need? Or what mass do I have? What mass do I need? Either way, you have to use both N equals M over M and C equals N over V. And your all-important mole ratio, which we got from the balanced equation, the coefficients of the balanced equation.